Happy one year anniversary, Overwatch. It feels like just yesterday we were logging onto your servers, picking out our favorite hero, and getting mowed down by Bastion. And over the last 12 months, Blizzard has done everything you can imagine to please a player base of 30 million, including seasonal events, short films, and even its very own esports league. But in that same time, so many things about the game have changed. So what I wanted to do was go through the past year's timeline and grade Blizzard on how they've handled the game's gradual transformation and give them a report card they can show their parents later. Now, if you need a reminder of all the updates that Overwatch has had, you can check out all the live streams Eric Tay and I have done for some loot box shenanigans, or you can check out the hero guys for all the new characters. But if you're ready to go, let's recap. Oh, let's break it. Damn! As we all know, we had three heroes bestowed upon us during the past year, all three of which are impeccably designed, fitting right into the world and its established lore. First, we were given Ana, the healing sniper with an amazing set of tools. Then, a few months later, Sombra was revealed to the planet, and we were all excited to play as a stealth character and hack everything in sight. And finally, after some Doomfist rumors that were no doubt magnified by Terry Crews' visit to the Blizzard campus, we met Orisa, the Numbani robot designed to protect. Each one of these heroes has pushed the story forward, injecting life not only into the Overwatch universe, but also the game's meta. And even with Ana currently being used way more than Sombra and Orisa, all three still feel useful and, most importantly of all, fun to play. Blizzard also introduced three brand new maps as well. There was Echo Point Antarctica, which was mostly relegated to a 3v3 arena and is actually somewhat of a bore to look at. But the other two maps, Oasis and Eichenwald, are both absolutely gorgeous. If I had any gripes, it'd probably be with the way Sombra's reveal was handled. Now, I like alternate reality games just as much as the next person, but Blizzard's decision to draw the reveal out for months, going from one fake website to another, with timer after timer counting down to nothing with no end in sight, it just kind of tired everyone out. After a while, it just wasn't fun anymore, and people just pleaded for it to end. So for Overwatch's new heroes and maps, it gets a B plus from me, and I just hope Blizzard can keep the future releases just as hype. One thing that I'm sure a lot of us were hoping for this past year was a single player mode of sorts, anything that would further detail Overwatch's storyline. But Blizzard seemed to be content on doing their own thing and delivering the characters' backstories very, very gradually through short films, comics, and blog posts. I think this is probably the smarter way to go about things, as it keeps players interested and lets each new story update soak in. The game does have a lot to work with, but I would personally love to see more plot-based seasonal events. You know, stuff like the Uprising event that is canon to the Overwatch universe. But until then, Overwatch gets a B plus in the story department. There's little doubt that Blizzard has been hitting it way out of the park with their seasonal events. The Summer Games, Halloween Terror, Winter Wonderland, Year of the Rooster, and Uprising have each displayed Blizzard's strength in creating exciting events. Each one has given players new skins, emotes, wind poses, sprays, as well as fun arcade modes that showcase just how well the game can morph into different styles. Okay, maybe I could have done without the Turtle Fest that was Capture the Flag, but Junkenstein's Revenge was pretty spectacular, and the holiday themed maps were a joy to play. Overall, it's an A minus. Balancing is tough work. Just ask this guy right here. Within the first few months of release, we are all realizing just how overpowered McCree was, so Blizzard took away his ability to kill tanks with his fan the hammer. Now, it seems like it would be a mistake for them to let that slip through, but it's a perfect example of how aware Blizzard is about the balance in their game. Overall, I feel like Blizzard has done an exceptional job with one of the hardest aspects in competitive games. Nearly every character has been tweaked to a point where it doesn't feel embarrassing for you to play them. Yes, Winston, I'm looking at you. It's a constant balancing act to keep 24 different characters on the same level, and it's only going to get harder as they add more heroes to the mix, but even complete overhauls to characters' designs have worked pretty well in their favor. For example, Symmetra, who was possibly the most underplayed hero for the first six months, was transformed into a powerful, and in some cases, essential character, all while retaining everything that made her fun to play to begin with. Like the cleaning of a house, balance changes never end. So while we're looking to the future and hoping Blizzard doesn't screw up our favorite heroes, for now, they get an A-. While it's not necessarily something that Blizzard instituted themselves, I think the most important thing that has risen out of Overwatch's existence is the fandom. 
Even during the beta, before the official release of the game, people were discovering the personalities of the heroes and there was just enough mystery behind each of their stories for fans to fill in the blanks. And fill in they did. Everywhere you turn, there were people making fan art, creating cosplay, making tutorials. But the best part about the community effort is that Blizzard has embraced it all wholeheartedly. They understand the importance of fans finding their own fun with the world they've created, and they just let the people do it. Hanzo mains want to be the butt of all jokes? Sure, Blizzard will play along. And especially we want to dedicate this to all the Hanzo mains out there. In just 12 short months, the community has greatly influenced how Overwatch and its characters are seen outside the game, which is something that not many games can claim in their favor. Hell, they've even turned Blizzard's own Jeff Kaplan into a creation of their own. Is there anyone out there who doesn't look at him and immediately hear two to the one from the one to the three? What's up? This is Jeff from the Overwatch team. It's hard to say just how much of Overwatch's success can be attributed to the community, but its top-notch character and level design, attractive art style, and ridiculously charismatic voice actors hey guys, I'm here with Sombra. <laughs> have captured the attention of 30 million pairs of eyes. It's been one of the most inspiring, creative, and enjoyable communities to be a part of, and for that, Overwatch's community presence gets a big, fat A+. Ultimately, with all that Blizzard has done for the game, I'm giving Overwatch's first year an A. It's astounding just how much quality content they've given players. They've kept it fun, exciting, and consistently engaging. They've managed to give us a game whose story celebrates all walks of life, whose community has embraced its characters and world with open arms, and whose gameplay, in the face of the ever-changing competitive landscape, offers a satisfying and balanced experience. So Overwatch, thanks for the first year. And here's to another year. Or two. Or ten. Let's keep it going. Hey everyone, thanks for watching and I hope you all had a great first year with Overwatch 2. I had a lot of fun making this video and if you enjoyed it, please leave a like or subscribe to our channel to show your support. I'd really appreciate it. And if you have any great Overwatch memories that you guys want to share, please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next time.